Welcome back to In the Midst. So today we're still talking about the Proverbs 31 woman. And today we are going to look more at what she does. Simple concepts of how she handles things and the things she takes care of. So the overall theme today is that she was not lazy. She worked willingly. And that worketh willingly comes from um, verse... 13. Yes, verse 13. So we're going to look at verses 13 through 16, verse 19, verse 24, and verse 27 from the chapter of Proverbs 31. Everything is taken from the King James Bible. So if you're looking at something that's a little differently, maybe some of the words maybe aren't the same, then that's why. So the Bible says, she seeketh wool and flax and worketh willingly with her hands. She is like the merchant's ships. She bringeth her food from afar. She riseth also while it is yet night, and giveth meat to her household and a portion to her maidens. She considereth a field and buyeth it with the fruit of her hands. She planted the vineyard. She layeth her hands to the spindle, and her hands hold the staff. She maketh fine linen and selleth it, and delivereth girdles unto the merchant. She looketh well to the ways of her household, and eateth not the bread of idleness. So we see that she definitely had a lot going on, a lot that she was involved in, and things that she took care of. So we see that she sought good ingredients to make clothes and food with. Wool and flax are used for textile uses, and flax can also be used as food. You may have flax seed, things like that. So does this mean that we have to cook every single thing from scratch and make all of our own clothes and if not then we're not a godly woman no it doesn't does this mean that none of this applies to us today again no it doesn't today we have so many ingredients and materials that are easily accessible to us whether it's the local grocery store um you know grocery pickup amazon you know we have endless ways to get the things that we desire we see that she just did what it took to make sure her family had wholesome ingredients. And we can do that. There's so many things today that are organic, um, natural, not full of preservatives, not full of artificial ingredients. So this verse is not implying that you must make every meal from scratch and every article of clothing. You can, and those are definitely wonderful skills to have. And if you have those skills, please, please do the rest of us a favor and pass them on to the next generation. However, um, not having those skills does not make you less of a godly woman. I believe that we should be conscious of what we allow in and even on our bodies as far as chemicals and preservatives and, you know, some things out there just are flat out not healthy. But if we don't take the time to look and read and research, see if there's a better alternative, how do these things really affect us, then, you know, we're not going to know. We're not going to look for that better alternative. So, even if this is something that's new to you, if you were not raised this way, if you feel like I have no clue what I'm doing, where I even start, that's okay. You can still start and make these changes. You can still learn what is healthy, what's better alternatives, what's not. One step at a time. Do not let this overwhelm you. Um, so we see that she, it seems like she just took care of a lot. She did everything, which again makes us go, she's, she's perfect. I can't do this. But these are principles that I want you to see first. I understand that, you know, some days are long and hard and busy. We get sick. So does that mean we can't, you know, go pick up a pizza for dinner and call it a night? Of course you can. There's a balance. So I think that is really one of the things that God wants to like, drive home for us is it, this isn't one size fits all. This is not the same for everyone. So what happens is we look at our neighbor who does 
make her kids clothes or she does make everything from scratch or she only buys those organic vegetables that we know she paid three times the price for. We become envious of that. We become bitter and we say, well, I'm not as good of a mom as she is. I'm not as good of a wife as she is. And that's where Satan comes in to bring division and envy and we're not content with what we have anymore. So I don't want you to take it that way of, I have to do A, B, C, and D, or I'm not being you know everything that I should be. That is a works-based righteousness, and that's not what God intends for us to have at all. Can we learn from other people? Absolutely. Can we you maybe ask that other lady, hey, you know, how do you prepare those meals? Or what's some of the healthy meals that you've learned to make? I want to try to make those too. Or, you know, maybe someone has tore a hole in a shirt and, you know, maybe she can help you learn to patch that or sew that or put on a button. It doesn't have to be every single thing, every single time, every single day, or else we're missing the mark. That's not what God intends here. The point is she's taking care of her home. She's taking care of her family. She's not lazy. She's working willingly with her hands, as we'll see. I think that it is definitely good to have the goal of trying to give our family the best that we can, the best we can find, the best we can afford, the best we can learn to put together. Look, my doll is oh, it on broke. I'm sorry. I can't put it back together. We need super glue. Okay, I'll try to glue it. Okay, I'll put it right here. Thanks. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna go so, and play outside. Um, things aren't perfect here, so that's just how life is. Most of you have kids, you know, so welcome to the club. We see that she works willingly with her hands. It's one thing to work with your hands and just get things done. It's a completely different thing to work willingly. Sure, we can have the house clean and the beds made and grocery shopping done, but if we've grumbled and complained through the whole thing, how is that honoring to the Lord? How is that encouraging our husbands? How is that setting the tone of our home for our children? It's not. This is a very, very big deal, especially as women. We have so much influence in our home. We really, truly do set the tone of our home. And we have just a couple words can make it positive and inviting and comforting and feel like home or it's completely negative and no one wants to be around. They can just feel the tension. And I really hope that's not the, the goal for your home is to be tension. Everyone's walking on eggshells. We see from her that um, she did a lot, but we don't see that she complained. We don't see that she halfway did something. Halfway doing things is not a willing attitude. If we are procrastinating, that is also not working willingly. That's something that we really have to guard against. We all struggle with that. So I'm not trying to, you know, belittle anyone or anything like that. We all struggle with this. It's just something that we have to be conscious of and really keep an eye on and ask the Lord to help us with these things because he wants to. We must get back to finding the joy of the Lord in our everyday tasks. We see in scripture a lot that People encourage each other and even themselves by reading scripture um, and praising God, remembering everything he's done for us. If that doesn't bring you into a better attitude and a season of gratefulness and gratitude, then I don't know what does. Because we see you can take anything that you don't like to do, whether it's, you know, getting groceries or putting the groceries away, putting laundry away, cleaning the bathroom. In those things, we must find something to thank God for. We thank Him for the health that we have to do those things. We thank Him for the finances we have to go buy the things we need, for the home that we live in, for the clothes that we have to wear that are dirty. But because they're dirty, it means we've had clean clothes. The kitchen's a mess, but that means we have food to make to feed ourselves and our family. These are big things that we really should be thankful for. And if we can learn to praise God for those things, this is going to completely change the tone of our home and it's going to um, help you to have a heart of gratefulness. We can't wait until we feel grateful to praise the Lord. We praise the Lord and then our heart reminds us we're going to be grateful today. We 
learn that she brings her food from afar. Most of us today, we don't really have this challenge. In those days, much of their merchandise came from other places. We can usually find all that we need at the local grocery store, but she was willing to do whatever it took to find the things that her family needed. These were good quality things. Yet we often find it too troubling to stop at one more grocery store to find what we need. Or we get upset when our grocery pickup lacks an item that we ordered. We are spoiled. We are, we have so many modern conveniences that our, even our grandparents, much less the people in the Bible days, didn't have. And if one little thing is out of whack, we think just, it's, it's just awful. And we have the right to be bitter and upset and angry at someone. That's just not how it works. That's not having a godly spirit and a godly attitude. This is not, you know, portraying gratefulness. So she's up before the sun preparing their food for the day. No one in her home is left uncared for. This is so, so important. This is something I really think that God cares about a lot. You know, your home and your family, these are your first ministry. And everything else comes from this. So if we're not taking care of those in our home, how are we taking care of other people? Honestly, we're probably not. If we're not doing what God commanded here, we're probably not doing much outside of here. And if we are, we're probably not doing a very good job. So we have to be careful. In society, I see and hear and read a lot of things online of wives that say that they don't have to serve or do things for their husbands because they're adults. He's a grown man. He can take care of it. You're right. They can, but is that working willingly? Is this a willing attitude to take care of your family and serve your husband? Maybe you just have the arrangement of, he does his own laundry, I do mine and the kids. Okay, you know, if that's something that you've agreed on, then, uh, you know, go for it. Maybe he does most of the cooking because he's better at it, he likes to cook. That's fine, but if our attitude, and this is what God really stresses on, is our motives, our heart condition, our attitude, if our attitude is, I refuse to because I shouldn't have to, then I would definitely encourage you to take that to the Lord and ask him if that's an okay spirit to have. Ask him to help you cultivate a different attitude. And I would even go to your husband and say, do you mind doing your own laundry or is this something that you would rather me take care of? Everyone has a different preference, but just make sure that your heart is one of service we see all through scripture, that's what Jesus did. He served others. I mean, Judas betrayed him, but we find Jesus washing his feet. Jesus knew Judas was going to betray him. That wasn't a surprise. And he didn't say, because I know this is going to happen, then I'm not doing that for you. That wasn't his attitude. And we, you know, really should be portraying Christ to our family. I feel that this concept is more important than being up before the sun to make breakfast. I don't get up early, not before the sun and definitely not cooking. Why? My husband is kind of more of just get up and get out the door. He doesn't want a big breakfast first thing in the morning. My, him and my children both would rather sleep than eat. So we don't, I don't do that. If I get up at five, six o'clock in the morning and I have a nice breakfast made, no one's gonna eat it. It's gonna be lunch and it's gonna be cold. And I'm gonna be like, I did this and no one appreciates it because that's how it feels. But knowing the dynamic of our family, I can shift that a little bit. I plan ahead for dinner, try to plan ahead for dinner and have things ready when my husband gets home. Um, you know, it's not just getting up early to make breakfast and if you don't, then you fail. That's definitely not what God is saying here. One of my children doesn't even like eggs. So it's, I could make the best biscuits and gravy and eggs and bacon and at six, seven o'clock in the morning, nobody cares. And one is not even gonna eat the eggs. So that can feel us leaving defeated because we get stuck in this box mindset of it has to be just like this or it's wrong and I'm failing. And that's not, that's not what Christ's intention, Christ's intention is for us. So even though that there's particular 
things like that that might not work for your family. This does not lessen your responsibility to make sure that they are cared for. We see that she bought a field and planted a vineyard. If you've ever had a garden, farm, or vineyard, you know this is hard work. She looked for a field that was fit to be used, that she knew was going to be fertile enough to grow. She had to prepare the ground. She had to plant the seed. She had to pull the weeds. She had to water it. When it was, and we, this wasn't a one-time thing. This is continually, daily, intentional. This wasn't just something that she got to do in her spare time. This was work. This brought forth a great harvest, but she was out there every day dealing with this. If you miss a day or two pulling weeds, they get away from you. If you miss a day of not watering, those plants might die. So this was something she had to make time for. When everything was done growing, now she had to bring the harvest in. This was no easy task, especially when you have other responsibilities at home. You do not have to have a garden or vineyard to be a godly woman, but she did because this was something that she felt took care of her family. This provided food that they didn't have to spend money on, you know, at the market. This was something that she, in today's world, we can and we put it away. We freeze it so we have it later. This was something that she just had that took care of her family so she knew what they were eating. She made their clothes. It says that she, let's see, where did it go? She lay at their hands to the spindle and her hands holded the staff. She make it, where'd it go? She make it herself coverings of tapestry. Her clothing is silk and purple. She took care of things. She sold the extras, which helped with their finances. Sewing is not a quick task. It's not easy. For some of us, it's easy. Some of us, it's not. But it wasn't quick. It takes time to make curtains. It takes time to make an outfit. It takes time to make a quilt. But... Not only did she make these things, she had to mend them when needed. Things wear out, they break, they fray, and it's easy to go, I'll just throw it away and buy a new one. That's not what she did. She made enough to sell. It's okay to be a stay-at-home mom and wife and still do something for a source of extra income if that's how God leads and if that's what you and your husband decide is best. And if not, then that's okay too. In today's world, Many corporations have work from home positions, especially in the days of COVID. There's so many that um, have remote positions and there's a variety of direct sales companies that the, the options really are endless. So much is, you know, based on your schedule, what you want to do, what you like to do or not. And you know, if you find something like that, that works for you and your family, go for it. She looks well to the ways of her household and eateth not the bread of idleness. I don't really know if that really needs anything else. God is seeking willing workers. This should be our goal and desire as the wife and the mother of the home to look after our home diligently, to not be idle. Yes, we need rest. Yes, we need vacations and a day out and maybe we're going to go out for dinner tonight and not cook. Go for it. But overall, our attitude should be caring for our home, being a help meet to our husband. Um, let's see here. We are not working our way to godliness. I think so often we get caught up and I have to do these things in order to have favor with God. And that's just not it. There is a balance and God does not want us to be out of balance, but we are not doing this just to earn God's favor. That's, it's not how this works. Our homes should be kept clean. It should be inviting. It should be a place of rest and comfort. Most of us cannot rest and have peace and comfort with laundry baskets, you know, piled everywhere, or we throw all the laundry on our bed and now it's bedtime. And we don't want to deal with it. Different things like that, you know, whatever it is that works for your family. If you have children, give them chores, let them help, teach them to help. This helps your sanity. It helps time management. It helps give them the skills to learn to do this. Cause hopefully one day they're not going to be in our homes forever. We want them to be prepared for life. So, you know, bring them to help. If you need help from your husband, ask. Don't demand, don't get upset, but ask. It, I mean, sometimes it's, for me, it's as simple as asking my husband, hey, do you mind to turn that laundry from the washer to the dryer for me? 
and that's all I need. I'm giving a bath. I'm doing dishes. I'm trying to get dinner done, and I just need, you know, just get this done so it can get in the dryer and I can handle it later. It's two minutes, and he doesn't care to do it. Our oldest is 12, and I've taught him to load and unload the dishwasher. Yes, it only takes a few minutes, but it's a huge help. He can put his own clothes away, so I'm not having to fold them and put them away for him. He knows how to do that. Taking out the trash, you know, cleaning the toilet, cleaning the bathroom sink, cleaning a mirror. It's something that they need to learn how to do, but it's just one less thing that you have to worry about. Procrastination is never going to be your friend. If any of you have children, family, you know that that laundry basket is only empty for about three seconds. And then all of a sudden I'm doing laundry for what feels like people I've never even met. It's just constant dishes. You don't run that dishwasher tonight. You're going to be hand washing three sinks of dishes because it's just where did, the, where did all this come from, right? So don't procrastinate. And then you have to spend three days to get caught back up. If we take, you know, 20 minutes here and there and just do it and get it done and keep it done, then okay. But like I said, things get busy. We're tired. We're sick. You know, the kids need something. We've had doctor's appointments today. That's okay. But the overall attitude should be to keep our home a place of rest and inviting, um, like an inviting atmosphere. So our kids want to be here. Our husband wants to come home. A clean home is a happy home. A clean home has order. And God desires for us to do, de to do things decently and in order. Ask him to help you. If you feel like you don't have balance and there's always so much to be done, it's more than you can do. Ask your husband if there's anything on your plate that maybe he thinks we should remove and shouldn't be there. Maybe that's, you know, that means that one kid doesn't play seven sports this season. It's okay. Your family, your home, the example you're setting, the tone of your home is what's important. So let us be ladies that choose to serve our families, be an example, and work willingly.